You want to see me dance, Mama? Come on, Billy. Come with Mama. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mama loves you very much. You're a very good boy. And Mama does want to see you dance, but first we gotta hide. We gotta hide, Billy. They're coming for us. Come on. You gotta get in here. Come on. Yes. Come on. Just follow Mama right now. Yeah. Give me that. Come on. Yeah, Mama loves you so much. But you gotta come in here. You gotta stay really quiet. You just gotta stay really quiet. Come on. Move your legs. Come on. You got it. Please. Billy, please come with Mama. Come now. Come on, baby. We're almost there. Come on. This way, this way. Come on. We just gotta get in. We just gotta open this door. Come on, door. Oh, wait, Billy. Wait, Billy. I gotta open the door. Oh, man. Oh. You stay there, Billy. Stay there, Billy. Oh. Oh, maybe this way. Open that door. Oh. 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 Get you in there, Bill. I gotta get you in there. Uh, you stay there, baby boy. I gotta get you in there. Inside the store won't open my door. Oh, come on, baby boy. Come here. Just come here. Come closer. Just come closer. Come here. Come on. Come closer. Oh, I got it now. I got it now. Come on, baby boy. Don't fight me. I love you. I love you. Come on. You get in there. Get it. Get there inside. Get inside there. Okay. Now you just stay there. You just stay there, baby boy. Oh. You just stay there until mama. Until mama. Until mama comes back to you. Okay. Okay. Oh. Mama loves you so much, baby boy. Now you just stay in there. You stay in there and you be real quiet. You hear me? Ellen oh, Shire. <laughs> Come for the boy. You get out of here. Give us the boy, Ellen. Never. <laughs> He's gone away. I sent him away. <laughs> he can't have gone far. Where are you hiding him? <laughs> Spread out. He must be here somewhere. I said, get out of here. I'm get warning on. you. Leave us alone. My boy had nothing to do with those missing kids, and you know it. He's the devil. No. It's you. Somebody here is responsible. My boy wouldn't have done anything like that. It's one of you. Now, Helen, you know that boy has always been trouble. <laughs> trouble? <laughs> trouble, Sheriff? You, you, you mean trouble like you? What are you talking about, woman? Oh, I know all about you, Sheriff. I know all about what you're really like. Don't mind your tongue, woman. Or what? You'll cut it out of me? You're sick, woman. You and your whole family are a bunch of sickos, and especially that boy of yours. No, he's my precious. You just never understood him. He's the head. He's the head. He's the no, head. don't call him that. He's I said head. don't call him that. It's one of you. This whole town is, is, is evil. I have put four boys in a box in the ground along with my husband. I'll be goddamned if I'm going to lose my Billy. I know why you're here. <laughs> it's because I tried to stop the water company from flooding this town. But you know what? I'm getting out. I'm taking whatever's left of my family and I'm leaving. You want to sink that this town? You want to bury it under that lake? You go ahead. I don't want any part of it. That reservoir was going to happen with or without you, Helen. It's happening now, for Christ's sake. By nightfall, the north side of the town will be underwater. Ugh. Tomorrow, so will all of this. You should have taken the money, Helen. You would have been set forever. That's what it was for you, Sheriff, all along, right? It was always about the money. You sold our lives and our souls for profit. Well, guess what? This place has no meaning to me anymore. It's, it's, it's dead to me. And when this town dies, so will the mystery of those missing kids. It ends right here, right now, on this farm with your boy. <laughs> it's perfect, right? Like, you blame my boy, and then you're free. Is that what it is? I've had about enough, you woman. I'm warning you. I'm warning all of you. <laughs> I will bury this in your head. Oh no. gosh, get her. The whole family is evil. Now hold on, hell, look. All we want is to take Billy downtown for questioning, that's all. You can come to. Nothing's gonna happen. Now 
put that down. This is my property. This is still my property, and I told you to get out. I have a right to defend it. Yes, but you don't have a right to obstruct eminent domain, and that's what you're doing here, so put that down before someone gets hurt. You come any closer. I'm gonna stick this in your eye. You. You are all going to die. I curse you. I curse this town. I curse you all. Is she dead? She is now. That small town justice. What do we do now? Billy's in the pump house. All right, this is what we're going to do. We need to clean this up. We need to clean this up fast and make this disappear forever. Yeah. Take Helen up to the pump house. Weigh her down with something, rocks, whatever, but do it good, all right? What about Billy? He's in the pump house, right? Yeah. Okay, make damn sure he can't get out. You hear me? By tomorrow, they'll both be underwater and gone for good, along with the rest of Hidden View. Okay, everybody ready? Yeah, yeah. ready. Just, just one second, let me... Okay, focus is good. Check, check, check. Okay, all right, I guess I'll start. You, why don't, why don't we have someone introduce you? Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Um, I'll do something like, um, Dennis Grayson is a professor at SCC and the head of the American Folklore and Legends Department. He is the author of the book series, Why We Believe and Don't Be Afraid. Professor? Thank you. We're gathered here to dive deeper into the legend of the Hidden View Devil, aka The Hid. If you look through the syllabus, the Hidden View Devil legend originates back in the late 60s in the town of Hidden View now located at the bottom of the Hidden View Reservoir. A, the Hid, is supposed to be linked with Billy Shire from the Shire Ice Farm. He apparently disfigured himself, either had wooden legs or a wooden suit. It was never confirmed. But let's just say something was very wrong with Billy and or the whole Shire family. There were instances of some missing children and Billy was blamed. The town murdered his mother and locked Billy in a pump house just as the reservoir was being created. When the floodwaters from the river rose, Billy and his mother were gone for good. So that's the basic story. Legend has it that Billy was guiltless of the missing children crimes and now haunts a lake and surrounding woods seeking revenge against his accusers. Over the years, people have gone missing while investigating the hit legend. It's been suggested that they fell victim to the hit and now themselves will haunt the area for eternity. So that's the abbreviated story. Now, what have I always taught? 
every, every legend, legend is, is based, based on, on some, some sort of truth. truth. Correct. That is why we're going to attempt to find the truth behind the hit legend and not just investigate another ghost story. Maybe it will help us understand why people believe in ghosts and spirits and etc. Let's share with the audience who we are and why we have made the decision to join this assignment. Marla, why don't you start it off? Okay, I am Marla Wyckoff. Uh, during a vacation in Salem, I started to do a lot of research about the witch trials, and I was so um, fascinated by that history of witchcraft, and um, I started to get to the darker side of literature, Edgar Allan Poe, Mary Shelley, H.P. Lovecraft, um, and then last year I worked on a paranormal docudrama, which was awesome. I uploaded it to YouTube, and that's kind of turning into this thing, Dead Air. Um, Wait, you're so, Dead Air? Yeah, it's me. Dead Air with your host, Marla Wyckoff. So, um, yeah, I went from an English lit major to a YouTuber. But, I don't know, I, I never really believed in ghosts to begin with. Um, I thought their stories were interesting, especially their origins, where they came from. Um, but that changed. Uh, a cousin of mine, we went over his house, he said it was haunted by this woman, Miss Mix who passed away and her cats ate her. Um, yeah, I, I, listen, I get it, cats gotta eat. I, it's tragic, but you know, I I know. But we're discussing that there there had been this haunting and I convinced him to get out his Ouija board. Oh, um, well, you asked for it. Yeah, that's in retrospect, <laughs> probably shouldn't have done that. Um, but nothing happened at first. It, you know, it, was, it wasn't responsive and my friend got really pissed off and started cursing at it. And then bam, all the windows opened, the house shook, and the board started to levitate off the ground. Um, so yeah, I mean, we all heard it, we all felt it, we saw it. So that night was really when I, I went from not believing to believing. And that's when I started to do more research on spirits and the afterlife, and I, I started to really dive deeper into hauntings. And I believe very much that these spirits are in a lot of pain and they're bound to this earth because of that and if I can find some way to release them from that pain and help them to move on in the afterlife they can finally rest and that is why I believe that Billy Shire was very wronged and is now stuck here and until we release his spirit from all of this pain he is going to continue haunting and terrorizing this town so here I am. Ghost Whisperer. I am, yes. Okay, Jake. Let's hear why you're here. It's certainly not for the money. No. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a gig. I'm a filmmaker. Uh, you know, I just need one more credit and I can... I got all the credits I need to be out of here and on my way. But no, that's not... That's not really it. Um... I was, uh, it was because I saw a post. Uh, I was walking through the, that creepy path in the woods from north to south, and um, my phone fell out of my pocket, and I went to pick it up, and the uh, notifications tab was open, right, to, the, to uh, this ad for this. So whatever, right? But, you know, that day I was thinking a lot about my friend Dave, uh, it was the one-year anniversary of his death. So I, I don't know, I uh, thought it might be some sort of sign or something. So, do you believe in ghosts? Do I believe in ghosts in, in the afterlife? Or is it no different, nothing more than just a dried-up squirrel on the side of the road? Well, I got one for you. So, I, uh, Dave and I used to talk really late into the night. It's because he was, um, he couldn't sleep because of the meds he was on. Uh, so the night of his death, I, um, I got a call at like 4 a.m. Uh, I picked it up, and, um, all I heard were the crickets outside my window. 
I heard the crickets through the phone. I was inside the house. I heard the crickets that were outside. Uh, and I said, Dave? No answer. Um, and the next day, they, uh, they told me that he died right around the time I got that call. So, uh, you know, if there's something to this hid thing, I'd love to get it on film. All right. Sam, you're up. Hi, I'm Samantha Tuttle, and I've been a part of Professor Grayson's department for about five years now. I teach modern day witchcraft and underground cults at the college, and I'm here as part of the research team. So my backstory started when I was a teenager. We used to hang out in the woods, oddly enough, around a small reservoir with a fence around it posted with signs like keep out, private property. And it was part of an old rock quarry called Chimney Rock, which got its name from this uh, rock that was protruding out of the top of the mountain. And it had been painted white um, years ago and reportedly marked a spot where demonic cults would come and perform rituals. So my friends and I just thought it was some weird made up story and we would frequently go up there and hang out or party. So one night a girlfriend and I are on our way up there and when we get to the top we see a hole in the fence and despite the signs we decide to go through it as we see a fire in the distance and we're thinking it's probably our friends having a party. So as we're on our way over there, we see these people and they're standing around the fire and they're dressed in this strange garb and they're wearing these things on their heads, like horns or something. So we decide to hide behind the bushes and we're listening to them and they're chanting, we have eyes on top of our heads. We have eyes on top of our heads. Whoa. Yeah. So it was crazy. It was like we were watching a scene from the movie Race with the Devil. Um, so anyway, so my friend stands up. She goes to step forward. She snaps a stick. These people stop. They turn and they look in our direction. I look at my friend. Her face turns white as a ghost and she screams, run! But here's the thing, I couldn't run because that day I wound up sprinting my ankle at field hockey practice. So I was wearing one of those plastic boot casts, so I couldn't run. Holy shit. So one of these boogeymen are now racing right toward me and I do the only thing I can think of and I dive into a thorn bush, tuck my head down, curl up like a ball, and I just stay there. I mean, I was so scared, hearing all these voices around me, footsteps all around me, but I couldn't move. I was cramping up, but I couldn't move until the next day when the, th when the sun came up, then I hobbled home. Did you ever find out who they were? No, but I will tell you that I really don't think that these were some evil beings from some far off distance. I truly believe that these were people that I would see every day. But I do think that they were part of something very sinister. So I started doing research and interviewing anybody and everybody I could. And then finally I came up with my book called The Chimney Rock Cult. That's what I'm talking about. The monsters out there are real people, not ghosts and demons. So you don't believe, Professor? No. Now I'm not saying there isn't unexplained energy or a feeling of a spirit like in uh, Jake's analysis, but it seems to me that these tales and legends, they, they point more to a person or a person's creating a story and then transforming it into something that grows on its own. I lean more towards Jake's analysis, where nothing more than just 
a dried up squirrel on the on the side of the road. It's a bummer. I mean, I'm not trying to to squash anything, Marla. I'm I'm just trying to understand. It's not just a a, a tale or a legend. It's it's a it's it's an unsolved crime. One we have a murder or multiple murders. Two, we have a town buried beneath a lake. And three, we have missing teens dating back to the 60s with nothing to blame other than the ghost of Billy Shire. Come on, if anything else, it's, it's, we can shine a light on this. Maybe the secrets here, we can discover them. So, I've secured a cabin at the side of the old park right by the lake. And I'm not gonna lie, it looks like pretty rough accommodations, so make sure you pack warm. And with that being said, let's wrap this up. And if anything comes up or if any of you change your minds, I'll see you all next week. Yeah, let's do it. I'm good. Yeah, what could happen? How much further? Well, we lost our GPS, so it must be close. What? Why? It's a dead spot. We're in the valley between two ridges. Don't worry, we're on the right road. We're looking for a sign for Pickett's Bait and Grocery. Bait and Grocery? So they're interchangeable? Then we have to meet up with a guy named Henry. He's gonna let us in. So this park or whatever, it's not closed? Pretty much. From what I understand, there are a few cabins that you can rent. The lake suffered a drought and algae blooms. Oh, so. there's a sign, I think. Uh, yes, that's it. Hey, I don't have any cell phone service. Like I said, the valley. The old no cell service? What is this, a low budget horror movie or what? Here's your welcome kit. Brochures, maps, do's and don'ts, stuff we talked about. It's all in there. Take a look. Is this the uh, best cabin you got? This is the best cabin that we have here. It has a roof. It doesn't leak. It's got electric. Oh, that reminds me. If the electric, the, when the wind blows, sometimes it trips the uh, breaker. Mm -hmm. That happens. You just got to go down to the utility closet or the utility cabin down the way. It's on the way in. Anyway, is there another one of you guys coming or something? Yeah, Jake, uh, he went to go check out the lake. Okay. Do you do this a lot, like uh, set people up and... Uh, I've been handling it for the pickets for a while. Just yeah. kind of take care of the property. Pickets? Yeah. So... Carlton and uh, Sarah Jane Pickets. I think they bought it in 78, 79, and they tried to make a lake resort out of it. But uh, after the drought, you know, it became a party spot. And the, the pump house is still there. It's above ground now. Oh, shit. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. I mean, uh, I wouldn't go poking around there or anything. There's not really much to see there. I would stay away from there if I were you. Mm -hmm. And um, they ran it up until uh, <laughs> the previous guy blew his head off. So What? Yeah, there's a lot of ghosts and stuff around here. So, Do you know anything about Billy Shire? <laughs> Why, you go right after it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't know about anything about the rumors and all the walking, you know, dolls and things but there is a lot of weird stuff that goes around here I had an incident uh, you know I thought I saw that Cindy Lou character I told my mother 
I will be late. I told my mother I wouldn't be late. <laughs> I told my mother I wouldn't be late. Do you, do you know who Cindy Lewis? Yeah, she was the lover of Billy Shire's father, um, who was shot to death alone. <laughs> and so, do you remember like any details from that? Or? Yeah, they found her in an ice machine uh, with her legs blended up. It's, uh, it was kind of graphic and Shit. detailed. What was that? Uh, that was uh, Christmas Day, nineteen sixty-seven, I believe. Yeah. Oh. Not very festive. Not yeah, it was uh, a murder suicide, is what they said it was with the uh, with the husband. I think I don't know what happened that night with that Cindy Lou, but ever since then, my leg just hasn't been right. Doctor says it's like some nerve damage that went all up and down. So, anyway, um, yeah, good luck with everything. Thank you for the welcome kit. Oh yeah, yeah. no problem. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you, got oh. that, you. Got that thing? Yes. Yeah. Here you go. Have a good night. Good. Good. All right. Thank Enjoy. You. Thanks. What was in the envelope? Uh, four hundred dollars. For this? No, uh, one hundred was for the rent. However, the rest was for stuff that he's found working here over the years, like uh, police reports, local clippings, stuff like that. My guy's been busy. All right. Well, let's look at all of that later. Let's go catch up with Jake and and uh, check out the lake before it gets dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, lead the way. Welcome back to Dead Air. This is your host, uh, Marla Wyckoff. Uh, today we have a really special episode. So we are on location at a super haunted, um, super mysterious location. Okay. Welcome back to Dead Air. I am your host, Marla Wyckoff. We are on a super cool location this week. Uh, we are investigating the death of Billy Shire and his mother who were wrongfully murdered by the town. Billy was believed to be demonic uh, and possessed. I don't believe that to be true. I think that this was a boy who was troubled and an outcast and the entire town covered up his horrible, horrific murder. So we are staying in a cabin that is very, very close to the haunting. Um, many sightings have been reported in this area, which is absolutely crazy. Um, so I'm going to take you on a quick tour of our luxurious cabin stay that is definitely haunted. Alrighty, let's take a look. So we have our super creepy, super old uh, recording devices here, definitely haunted. Um, we have these conspicuous empty bottles. What was in them? I don't know, but we'll find out. Maybe, maybe not. And we have our dartboard, our spooky lamp. And look at this. Uh, if you're a millennial like me, you know what it is. But if you're Gen Z, you might have a hard time. It's called a landline. I know definitely haunted. We have a spooky racket and spooky curtains and ice skates, you know, because there was a huge um, ice packing um, industry in the area. So ice packing was a major way that they made their money. And we have our beautiful cozy tapestry and our even more beautiful professional psychic. Cindy Lou, in case um, you guys didn't know, was having an affair with um, Helen's husband. So I don't want to spoil anything, but her death, pretty, pretty disgusting. It involves an, uh, an ice machine, but we'll get there. And yeah, these are all the files that we've been going through. So we have, you know, a picture of this reservoir, right? So the town um, wanted Helen and her son to leave because they wanted to flood the entire town and create a reservoir. Uh, she didn't want to do that. Yeah, so to this day, Helen and her son, that's Helen, they're still missing. So their bodies have never been found, which is just crazy. Um, we have such an amazing psychic that is going to do the best seance ever. Boop, boop. And a professor that is going to be shocked, dismayed, and blown away. 
None of the above. He's such a Debbie Downer. I freaking can't. Oh my gosh. Ah, but he's gonna be like, when I'm right, like, oh well. You owe me a drink. And what happens if I prove you wrong? Uh, not gonna happen. Because... It's just not gonna happen. Right, okay. Okay, so pop quiz. What's the scaredest you've ever been in your life? I haven't been scared of anything. I mean, ever since I was young, I just knew that there were explanations for everything. Uh, I've seen magic tricks. I've seen the, the strategies, the science behind the magic tricks. I've never been blown away, I've never been shocked, I've never been scared. I even knew like scary movies, horror movies, they weren't real. A true man of science. Everything is just smoke and mirrors, that's all it is. You know what? At least he's consistent, ladies and gentlemen. Says here since the reservoir is inception in 19... 68 of December, uh, 12 people perished or gone missing after being in an area of Hidden View Lake or surrounding campgrounds. Uh, in 95, a fisherman hooked a boot with a human skeleton foot in it. Last known incident was in 1999, journalist Timothy Sullivan went missing. Last seen in August of that year after interviewing Sarah Jane Pickett about Billy Shire's story. There's that name, uh, Pickett's? Here, it's right here. It's raw footage of that interview. How do you have Wi Fi? I don't, I have satellite 4G data on this. Can I get that? Can you I, just I get it? watch the film? Why is Billy Shire called the Hidden View Devil? Because only a devil would do that to himself. That's why. Stick their own legs into dry ice until they die. Only to replace them with wooden ones? That's a demon. No wonder why he was bullied. No, he wasn't a little boy. Well, in his mind, maybe. But not in his body. He was big, lanky. His body kept growing strange-like not normal through the years. His head was big, deformed, a square looking box thing with long stringy hair. They say there was a demon growing in stride of him and he came back to terrorize this town. You could hear him squeaking around the woods screaming, you want to see me dance? You want to see me dance? And if you hear that, you're finished. There's lots of tortured souls running around these woods. And if you see one, you'll suffer the same fate. Believe it? If you believe in God, then you have to believe in the devil. So... The head is a seven foot tall doll with a square head made of wood. It's supposed to be scary. Stop it. It is an interesting story. What did she mean, like, suffer the same fate? Phantom misery. I've heard of that. Phantom misery, what is that? It's the spirit suffering. It sometimes jumps into the witness. It's like when an amputee loses a limb, they can still feel it as if it were there. That guy that brought us here, he said that after he saw Cindy Lou, he began to suffer nerve damage in his legs. So because he saw Cindy Lou, well, you know, Cindy Lou was found in an ice machine with her legs ground up. It makes sense. So, like, I'm going to get splinters or something if I see this hit thing? Oh you see... This is why I'm feeling like this is more of a demonic entity and not the spirit of Billy. A ghost doesn't shape shift. 
I don't understand that. Like, what do you mean a ghost doesn't, like, shape shift? I mean, these reports say that the so-called hid, it appears and haunts the area and, you know, it appears as all these different entities, like Billy, young Billy, Billy's father, Cindy Lou, Shane Dakota, the caretaker that killed himself on the property. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying is if this were truly Billy's spirit, it would just be Billy. It wouldn't be all these other entities. Right. That's why I'm feeling like it's something more demonic. Well, what about that uh, suicide forest in Japan? Oh, the, the Sea of Trees? Uh, Okikahara. Uh, yeah, this suicide forest. People go there to commit suicide and haunt the woods forever. So, supposedly, yes, there could be lots of ghosts. Like, the ghosts that are there are, are still who they're supposed to be, but they're just trapped there, and something that's more demonic, it takes the shape of somebody else's spirit? Is that, that's why there have been so many different sightings over the years? It may be just all bullshit. I mean, ghosts are an easy sell. So this is just some Scooby-Doo episode, and we'll discover mean old Mr. Green jeans behind a mask? I mean, come on. I mean, what I'm saying is that things happen. People get lost in the woods. Uh, people drown. It doesn't mean that it's some evil spirit or ghost. It's just... Why are you so dismissive? I mean, I'm just saying, until I see some proof, like right in front of me, I lean towards science. Okay, okay. Well, then, if it's all BS, then let's do it. Wait, what? Well, if yeah. you think it's BS, then let's try to talk to Billy. What are you talking about? Are we ready? By the mysteries of the eat deep, by the power of the east, and by the silence of the night, I conjure thee, thou distressed spirit, to present thyself here <clears throat> and reveal unto me the cause of thy calamity. You getting anything? I'm gonna do it again. Okay. By the mysteries of the deep, by the power of the east, and by the silence of the night, I conjure thee, thou distressed spirit, to present thyself here and reveal unto me the cause of thy calamity. Do you hear that? Hear what? Is that a bird? What is that? You think they got any games in here? Ooh. Yeah, they got games. Let's Look, they got Monopoly, uh, Axis and Allies. Ooh, that sounds fun. You got, uh... Tape? What is it? Scotch. Wait. Tape? Okay. And then, uh... What's in there? What is that? There's, uh... Uh, let me see that. Uh, yeah, it's a Limberjack doll. Um, uh, there must be more pieces to it somewhere. Yeah. Uh, a lumberjack doll? Uh, no, no, it's a, a limberjack doll. So, uh, uh, let's see. This. Yeah, I stick this in here. Yeah. Something, something like this, and then. Ooh. Honestly, that's pretty cool. But it's kind of creepy, I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah. Maybe we should use it in the seance. What do you think? What does our expert think? Honestly, I, I, I just want to focus on putting these pieces together a little bit more. Why don't we see what's in this tape? I cannot repent for my sins any longer, nor ask for forgiveness. I have done the bidding of a man I once admired, only to discover the true evil 
that resided inside him. Now I am left with the misery of my actions. Billy comes to me more often now, and I can no longer fight him off. I have covered for the sins of Kinderman for too long, and I've lost myself in the process. The unmarked graves that line hidden view have become my grave. May God have mercy on my soul as I leave one hell to enter another. That is definitely a suicide note. Oh. Well, it seems like you're not the only one thinking that. Uh, according to these reports, a Detective Sawiski interviewed Mrs. Shire before she and Billy went missing. I mean, he's basically giving up the sheriff. They knew Billy was innocent, and they killed him and the mother. Now they're trying to, tried to cover it up. And I don't know. I'm, I'm really curious. Um, you said that you had that interview on you? I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you, Detective. I, uh, I'm not going to take up much of your time. I just want to tie up some loose ends. Loose ends? Well, it seems that your family has seen much pain. God gives you what he knows you can handle. Well, frankly, if I went through what you went through, I don't know if I even would believe in God. What was it you wanted to ask me, Detective? S so whiskey, is it? They call me Whiskey Man. Well, that's charming. My Thomas was in love with the drink. Mrs. Sharp. Oh, please. Please call me Helen. Helen. Um, according to the police reports, uh, your husband was involved in a murder-suicide, but something just doesn't seem quite right. Detective, my husband was a wonderful provider, but he was a terrible husband. Slowly, as we lost our boys, he turned to drink and whores and... Yes. So, Cindy Lou was... Oh, she was his whore. I can assure you they were not in love. Thomas was just trying to ease his pain. He, he was using booze and, and, and horse. So you knew? It's a small town detective. Everyone knew. When you got there, they were dead. Well, he was, obviously. But Cindy Lou, she was still alive and talking. Did she say what happened? No. She was just babbling. The whore, the whore was just babbling. I told my mother I wouldn't be late. I told my mother I wouldn't be late. She said it over and over and over. I don't even think she was aware that I was there. Did your husband have any enemies? Kinderman? The sheriff. Yeah, that dried out clump of snot. That was nepotism at its finest. But that's what you do with a problem in a family. You put it in a position of power so no one can do anything about it. Now. Kinderman Sr., wasn't he a judge? The whole family was some kind of brass. You want to find the source of the evil? Start there. And he also had it out for my boy. I see. Let's talk about Billy. What about him? He has nothing to do with any of this. Well, Kinderman states right here in his notes that Billy was a suspect in your husband's misfortune. Well, that was a misunderstanding. Wasn't Billy expelled from school for threatening his teacher? Yes. That was a misunderstanding. Okay, uh, let's see here. Billy reportedly told his teacher that he was going to cut off her head and mail it to her mother in a hat box. What was the uh, misunderstanding? It was a cake box detective, not a hat box. My Billy loves his cake. You don't see a problem with that, ma'am? No. He was defending my honor. Stories were flying around town about his father. 
His teacher was saying things about me. He did what any good son would do. You see, I not only have a wonderful son, I have a best friend. Can I speak to Billy? No, he's not feeling well. He's ill, he's resting. Ma'am, what happened to your other boys? Ooh. Let's see. In 52, Junior, he jumped out of the back of a pickup truck to get his hat, which had flown away. Well, he slipped and he hit his head on the bumper. 54, Robert, he fell into the bottom of a brine tank and he sank to the bottom. Why didn't he just swim out? Detective, do you have any idea how cold the water is in a brine tank? His body went into shock the minute he hit the water. In 57, Jeffrey was riding on the back of his friend Eddie's motorcycle. Eddie was drunk, he hit a curb. Jeffrey flew off and he broke his neck on a no parking sign. Eddie got away with it too. He told the judge, he told the judge that Jeffrey had been driving. I'm sure he's living in his own hell. And James, well, that was 1963 and he hung himself. I don't know why. He used to say he, he saw things, like monsters. I, I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? I think it was the drink. I think it melted away his brain, just like his father's. And sadly, he didn't tie the knot right. So they say that his body just swung back and forth, back and forth. So that leaves just Billy. Yes, he's all I got left. And nobody's going to hurt him anymore. Anymore? Yeah, well, no one understands Billy. He's special. He's very special. Ma'am, I think I've taken up enough of your time. Kinderman sent you, didn't he? He's a liar. Well, I'm looking into that too, ma'am. So, hey, detective, I, how did I do? Did I pass the test? Well, Mrs. Shire, either you're the world's strongest woman or a brilliant sociopath. <laughs> I found them, detective. I didn't kill them. Thomas couldn't stand the shame he was bringing on our family. So he pushed Cindy Lou into the ice machine and then he put the barrel of a shotgun in his mouth. After interviewing Mrs. Shire, I am skeptical of her mental state and the whereabouts of Billy. He then writes, at one time Helen Shire was being investigated for possible Munchausen syndrome by proxy as a result of the loss of the rest of the sons by strange accidents. Sis. Looks like a nice pick. Wait, can you hold that for a second? Pull that out yet? I'm afraid to pull everything out. Can you rotate it slowly? Ooh. That looks like something that they used to use in lobotomies. Maybe these were Helen's? We have all this cool new stuff, so maybe we should try the conjuring again. Okay, I think that's a good idea. Okay, come on. I need everybody to focus here this time. Even you. Come on, I want all of us to just... Wait, wait. I want to get this on camera. Okay. I'm calling out to anyone. Anyone who's associated with the ice pick. With the tape. Anyone who's fallen victim to the tragedies here at Hidden View. And is still here. By the mysteries of the deep, by the power of the east, and by the silence of the night, I conjure thee, thou distressed spirit, to...
present thyself here and reveal unto me the cause of thy calamity. You getting anything? No. Did you hear that? Hear what? Hear what? You didn't hear that screeching? That, that like, that scratching? Ow. Oh my god, I had a really bad headache all of a sudden. Ooh. Are you okay? Oh. Who's that a tumor for your heart? What? Who's that a tumor for your Is that like two more here? Sorte. Maintenant. Vous allez mourir. Vous allez tout mourir. Donc, sorte! Maintenant! Vous allez mourir. Vous allez mourir. Vous allez tout mourir. Donc sortez maintenant. Vous allez mourir. Sortez s'il vous plaît. Sortez maintenant. What's the matter? What's what's going on? I feel like I can't. Oh god. What? I think it's passing. Okay. Uh Something's different. I don't know what it is. Something feels really different though. Like something's here. Jake, why were you speaking French? What? Yeah, you were speaking French. Play the tape back. Oh, here. What? We have something to play it back with? Yeah. This is just like... This is just like really... freaky because apparently on Google Translate it says that... that uh, what? We're all gonna die and we should get out. Jake, do you know anybody French or... Dave. Who? Who's Dave? Uh... My, uh, my friend I was, I was talking about. Oh, uh, oh, right, right, right. Yeah, he uh, was half French. He used to spend his summers there in France. Okay, so maybe it was his friend Dave. Plus Billy drowned, so... That would explain the water. Maybe Helen, she, um, she got something, uh, I, I don't know. She might have gotten hit in the back of the head. I don't know. Phantom feelings. That's what that yeah. was. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. But you know what? We had contact. I mean, Billy was here. Someone was here. Something was here. I mean, this is, this is incredible. I mean, I mean you've got to be believing at this point. I mean, you, you can't just make this up. Obviously, someone is screwing around, uh, okay? Come uh, you on. Enough. Oh, this is... You saw it. You saw it with your own two eyes. Something is 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 going on here that that science cannot explain. It's not. You were literally just drinking water. And that's what happened. I, did, I didn't knows. touch it. I didn't touch it. I don't speak French, man. You knew somebody that was French. You probably recalled something that he said before. What the heck? What was that? Okay, I'm oh. I'm. Honestly, oh. guys, I'm like freaked out, to be oh. honest. Uh, calm down. Henry said the lights would go off uh, frequently. It's okay. just, that's just what happens. I think here. I, I might have a light on here, but I don't know. Okay. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, 23%. Well, I think there's some, there was some, um, there's some, oh, shit. Oh, gosh. There's some, no, wait, because I remember, he, Henry, uh, 
sorry, excuse me. Um, Henry also said that there were, um, there were like these wind-up lamps somewhere. Like, to... This is getting like, this is getting really like freaky. Like, I, I don't like this. I, I, don't I, see I mean, anything out there. All right, should we keep going? Oh come on! I know someone heard that. Okay, who's I, it's, screwing it's around? It's Billy! I swear to God, it's Billy. It's, How did you not hear that? It's not Billy. Yes, it is. I heard it. We're the only ones here in this cabin. I know, I know what I heard. I'm not crazy. I swear to God, I, I heard it. I don't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. No one heard anything? Marla, calm down. I'm not calming down. Over I, I'm, here. I'm serious. Whoa. Guys, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly getting upset. Like, I just, okay, I don't I just heard it I too. Did. I just heard it. Okay, everyone, enough. Who is screwing around here? Okay? I, 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 I'm telling you, I know it's Billy. I swear to God. Oh, jeez. Oh. Maybe we should, maybe we should stop. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm like really getting freaked out, guys. I don't. You just calm down. I know. I'm just. I'm really. I don't, I'm not good in the dark. I'm the only ones that heard it. How is that possible? Thing, I. I don't know. I. I just. I don't understand how you guys didn't hear that. I mean, it was. It was. It was so. So loud. All right. This is getting too. What was right. that? Enough. What was that? Yeah. It's something in the back. Um. Yeah. I'll, I'll go check it out. Are, Are you crazy? crazy? No. You yeah, that's how it always there. happens, you know. I'll Jake, just take this on. flashlight. For once, it's, can it's you no just problem. be serious? Take the camera with you. Why? Uh, There's, that's not necessary. There's nothing there. There's no ghosts. All right? I'll be fine. I'll just check out what's in the back. That's it. You guys need to just stay here, okay? I do not feel good about this. I... <sighs> Shit. I think my battery's dying. <sighs> I'm starving. Come Are you on, kidding? Jake? What? It's like all this, you know, lights going out makes me hungry. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I... Well, why did Dennis leave? I mean, this is just really starting to creep me out. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm kind of ready to go home, guys. I, I, I don't even, I don't even care about this anymore. Just this is, this isn't normal. <laughs> What was that? Dennis. All right. Uh, it was just an old branch that was hit in the back of the cabin. That's it. See? Nothing there. It was an old branch? Yes. Now the lights are back on. All right? Everybody good? What's the matter? Um, nothing. You heard it too, didn't you? Heard what? The child laughing. I didn't hear anything at all. Be kidding me. What? There is no way that you, we all heard it. Heard what? Just could you just for one minute pretend or, or at least try to think about a world? You didn't hear the kid laughing. What kid? I didn't hear any kid laughing. What the hell are y'all talking about? If you could just get out of your head for like a, a minute, get and, and out just... of my head. And then have the lights come back on, like on and off out of nowhere that you cannot tell me that the wind flipped an entire circuit breaker on and off. Henry said this would happen. Oh, come The circuit breaker? On. Yes. On it, come on. Um, let's, I'm done. We need to clean up and I'm done. Let's just, no, let's just, let's just call it quits. I, I just, We're just gonna... I'm gonna go flip the breaker, alright? Jake. 
<laughs> it's a few no, cabins no, away. Seriously, uh, no, it's a bad idea. This is a bad idea. Uh, I'm always having bad ideas. It's fine. No, I don't know. It's so. gonna be fine. Well, I'm gonna flip Phil the breaker. Go... No, let's just stay here. Uh, we'll get through the night. It'll be fine. Did anyone bring any booze or something though? Well, yeah, I, I, I did bring wine. Okay, good. I'll be back in a second. All right. <sighs> God, it looks like Jake found the circuit breaker. Oh, good. All right, that should do it. What is this? Is, is Jake? How do you have cell service? I, d I don't know. Uh, Jake, are you... Is everything okay? There's something wrong with my neck. Well, what are you talking about? Jake, what happened? Where are you? There's something wrong with my neck. Okay, okay. just what, tell me. What does that mean? Are, tell us where are, you are. Are you okay? There's got to be a first aid kit or something. What happened to your neck? Jake? Hello? Jake, hello. Tell us where you are. Dennis, hang up. That's not Jake. This is his phone. Hang up. What do you mean it's not his phone? He, he just this literally... is oh. his phone. Hang up. But how is... What is he but calling from? Yeah. Just hang up. That's his voice. That's obviously Jake. Jake, where are you? Do you want to see me dance? I don't know what that was, but Jake is still out there. I still feel like we need to go find him. Agree. Um, but one of us just stay here just in case Jake comes back. Over here. So I'll go. No, 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 no. You don't go by yourself. I'll go with you, and Marley, you stay here. No, I cannot stay here by myself. Listen, I'm sorry. You I'm need not gonna to be I... here because if Jake comes back, then somebody needs to be here. You just lock the door behind us. All right, okay? just, all right just there's another flashlight here. Just take oh. it. Right. Don't Thank worry. You. Everything will be just fine. Lock the door. Okay. <laughs> Um, guys, crap, this is <laughs> bad lighting. Um, hiya, hiya, dead, uh, dead airheads. Um, this is, um, your host, Mar uh, Marla Wyckoff, and, um, I just wanted to pop in. Um, I'm in my, uh, favorite place, uh, in the world. Uh, you know, it, I absolutely just love it here. It's great. Um, so just to, you know, give you kind of like an update, uh, shit kind of got really weird. Um, we definitely think that Billy is here in some parameters. The lights have been going off. Um, and things have just been not, uh, not, not how they, they should be. Um, the professor and Samantha went out to find Jake, so I'm here by my lonesome. So that's just peachy keen. Um, so yeah, hopefully, like, if you want to just, like, stay tuned, I'll be trying to give, um, as many...
Samantha. I. How did you. How did you even get in? I. I the door was locked. Are you okay? It's here. What? What's here? There's something wrong with my neck. Okay, what do you mean there's something wrong with your neck? Where's the professor? Where's Jake? Did you find anyone? Are you... Can you... Can you please just stop? You're really freaking me out. It's here. <laughs> professor? I was wrong. What's here? I was wrong. About what? What were you wrong about? Professor? I was wrong. About, about what? About what were, what were you wrong about? What were you wrong about? What is going on? It's here. What's here? Oh my god. What the hell is going on? Oh, come on. Okay. Okay. Okay, I, I, I'm... Oh god. Um, I don't know what the hell is going on. He's the head. 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 <laughs> Please, Billy, I know I can make it right. I know I can make it right. I promise. I promise. I promise that if you let me out of here, I promise I will tell you the truth and I'll, I'll tell you a story. I, I promise. Please just, please just make it stop. <laughs> Smart sound, yes. <laughs> Wanna see me dance? Open the door, Marla. Billy? Marla, open the door. Are you there? Open the door, Marla. So, if you let me out of here, I, I promise I will tell your story. But you, you absolutely promised to let me out of here. Marla, open the door. That's everything. Are you gonna be okay here alone? Oh, I've got a group coming. They're down by the lake, so they'll they'll be here in like 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hi, Dead Air. This is your host, Marla Wyckoff. So we are on a super cool location today. Uh, we're learning all about Billy and Hidden View Devil and our dartboard and our amazing professor. How's it going, Professor? Excited? I know, me too. What do you think about the hauntings? Do you think they're real or not? Oh my gosh, such a buzzkill. I know, but you know what? I think we're gonna see something. We have Samantha, our amazing psychic. She is just the absolute best and we're so happy she's here because I think later we're gonna do a seance. So thank you for coming, Samantha. And we have our fantastic absolutely outstanding cameraman, Jake, who has been a good friend of mine for a while. And low-key, 
he's kind of cute. But don't, don't let it get to your head, okay? Alrighty, guys. You know, Marla told me she was going to see her mother. And I believed her. I never would have let her go to Hidden View by herself. I'm Samantha Tuttle. I'm not a psychic. I'm Marla's therapist. I've been her therapist for six years now. She started coming to me soon after her fiance Dave died. She suffers from complicated grief. And she coped with it by going down a rabbit hole trying to discover whatever she could about the afterlife. I think she just felt like it would bring her closer to him. It was Marla, not Jake. That's the film student at SCC. I don't even know if Jake is real. She told me she met him in a, on a vacation to France. However, she's never been to France. But I never challenged her on it. She just started doing all these investigations and ghost stories and tales, whatever she could to get closer to the source. I kept her busy. But once she came upon that story of Billy Shire, I became concerned. Marla was consumed with the notion that it was vital that she somehow try to free Billy's spirit. I'm not sure why. Maybe she just felt like she could somehow... I, I don't... I don't know. I don't know why. She was testing reality at that point. I mean, she would talk about places and people that I don't know were real or not. She mentioned a satanic cult that she had come across as a teenager, but I don't know if that was real. But according to the video, she really believed that Professor Grayson and I were a part of her fantasy investigating team. Professor Grayson is actually Dr. Grayson, the head of the department here. I've never seen Hidden View. Dr. Grayson nor I have never been there. Marla rented that cabin by herself. And according to the police report, she clearly went snooping around where she shouldn't have, fell down a ravine, and broke her neck. But there's nothing evil or sinister about that. Just a horrible, avoidable tragedy. Now, Marla is in an induced coma and hopefully she'll recover. And when she does, I will get back to work and I will try to convince her that life is for the living. And she needs to let go of all her past tragedies and those of other people. Marla can't save Billy Shire. The hid is not real. It's nothing more than just another campfire story.